Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has called you on this day to come into his house to hear his good news for you. We are in the um, end of the church year. Um, it uh, kind of comes quickly. We have all saints, and then usually there's a couple of Sundays, and then there's the introduction of Advent as we prepare our hearts and minds and receiving once again uh, the birth of our dear Jesus Christ. Uh, in this season between, if you will, as we conclude the church here, the messages can be quite frightful. And we're going to focus on the Gospel of Mark today where Jesus gives us very clear warning what to expect as followers, his followers. And yet he says, have no fear. And we'll discuss why we should have no fear. Welcome all of you to, to worship today. Some announcements um, before we begin. Um, one is, is uh, thank you for your participation in the Operation Christmas Child, the shoebox um, affair there. Uh, We're collecting them today, but if for some reason you forgot, which is probably more my, like, my lifestyle, um, please come bring them to the church this week as quick as you can. Um, also, you'll see in the, in the uh, Narthex, uh, uh, continual sign up for the live nativity. We've gotten some of the mechanics and the logistics down, but we do need your support in terms of the participation on the evening of the 17th and 18th, um, anticipating whether like now or even cooler, we're going to have to rotate people through. So um, your part is certainly required, and so prayfully consider that as you uh, uh, leave today. Um, some other announcements um, pertaining to the schedule. Today at 10 o'clock to 10.30, um, if you are interested in being a member of this congregation, um, we're going to start an orientation, just some light classes on where we stand at Christ the King Lutheran Church and an invitation for you to be part of it. Um, we don't want anybody to be surprised and say, what, what, we never signed up for this. We want to be clear about what we stand on and invite you to stand with us. And so we'll start that here at 10 o'clock to 10.30, and if you've got kids in Sunday school, we'll be done in time for, for you to greet them as they leave their classes. Um, we have uh, the Bible and Brew Bible study is on Tuesday uh, as it rotates the first and third Tuesday of the month. The rest of the schedule looks really good here. Lots of things going on. A reminder, if you're a confirmation uh, family, uh, that there is a mentor night on uh, on 6.30 on Wednesday, and that's with our fathers as our mentors. And then finally, um, Christ the King Sunday is a very important Sunday for us, and that's because we mark the anniversary of the creation, or the founding, rather, of this congregation. And so if you look in the back of the bulletin and the schedule, you'll note there's only one service, 10.45. Uh, at 10 o'clock, we'll have orientation if you can come about at 10.45, 9.30 Sunday School, 10.45 is a blended worship together with Holy Communion, and then we'll have a catered meal with a free will offering to follow. That's why we needed the worship a little bit later. So please make plans to come. Only one service. You also see that we have Thanksgiving Eve service coming up here shortly. It's just hard to believe that this month is rocketing by. And our prayer concerns, um, you're going to hear prayers, uh, and I invite you to pray for... Uh, Jerry Meister, Barb Buecher, Jill Oschlager, Grove Brown, and Jamie Mariner uh, for prayers of health and wellness. And we also hold our, uh, our Klinger family in our prayers with the death of Tony's father, Ken. I also wish to share with you a celebration. Um, I am a grandfather of a grandson, the first for a while. It's been uh, it's been 51 years on the Larson house and 60-something years on, the, on Connie's side of the house, the Summers house, and so it's been a dry spell. And uh, we're very happy about our girls. Don't get me wrong. They're going to be spoiled until I draw my last breath. But now we've got a grandson, so we praise the Lord. An eight-pounder boy. His name is Croy, as in like the river, St. Croy. Croy Dwayne, and that middle name is a fourth-generation name. So we give God the glory for the birth of new life and this special boy. Um, are there any other announcements that need to be said? Have I covered them all, Naomi? I think we did. All right. Um, dear friends, if you would turn into your bulletin, you're going to find an insert pertaining to quilt prayers. You see uh, on the altar rail, some quilts are just a sample of what's being packed up 
and being sent to various mission sources. Uh, The inspiration for such things comes from Acts, the ninth chapter, and I wish to read to you an account concerning a woman named Tabitha, or you might know her as Dorcas. Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 42. Now there was at Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she fell sick and died And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, entreating him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he had come, they took him up to the upper room, and all the windows and all the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing coats and garments, which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. Then turned to the body, he said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa. And many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joppa for many days. This is the word of the Lord. Please refer to the bulletin and your participation. Gracious God, as we place our hands on these quilts, we join the giver and receiver, recognizing the unity of all your people in the body of Christ. We celebrate being your redeemed children. We give thanks for the variety of gifts that compose these quilts, donations of fabric, thread, and sewing machines, the faithful people who cut the squares, design the patterns, sew the tops, iron the fabric, make backs and fillers, tie and stitch the bindings to make these quilts. We celebrate generosity, which we have learned from you, Holy Father. We give thanks for the fellowship of all who work together to make the quilts, the laughter, the sharing stories, the joy of crafting something with one's hands and hearts for another, and the time to reflect and wonder about the recipient. We celebrate community, which you have called us into, Holy Spirit. We pray that these quilts will serve a useful purpose in the life of the recipient, that they will bring warmth in the cold, shelter from sun and heat, a wall for a house, or a carrier for a few precious belongings. May it be a step in recovering one's life, and a message of care from someone they may never meet. We send these quilts as a sign of your love, and we pray for your many blessings on each person who receives one, trusting that these quilts will be used by you as a source of comfort and hope in the midst of disaster and fear, and draw them to your Son, Jesus Christ. We celebrate the hope that is found only in you, In the midst of life's trials, Christ Jesus, we ask that you bless the fruits of our labor and the whole mission of Christ the King Lutheran Church, that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. Bless all who give and all who receive as we are sown together in the unity of your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A a word of gratitude to our quilters and their hard work. And yes, they do laugh a lot. And sometimes I have to come out of my office and tell them to knock it off. No, that's, that's not true. It's always a joy to hear them. Our opening song tonight, today, is uh, If You But Trust in God to Guide You. It's 453. I invite you to stand and sing with me.
Please turn to page 77 for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are opened, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a moment of silent confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority alone, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service continues on page 78. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
be with you. I invite you to return to your bulletin, and there in the middle of page one is our prayer of the day. Please pray this prayer with me. Lord God, rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that while keeping the end of all things in mind, we may be stirred up to holiness in this life and come to be with you forever in that life to come. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. Let us hear from God. Reading God's word today is Hunter Jensen. Good morning. Our first lesson today comes from Daniel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. In this passage of apocalyptic literature, Daniel prophesied an impending calamity for God's people. The great prince, Michael the archangel, will come to Israel's defense. All those whose names are written in the book shall be saved. Daniel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Here ends the first reading. Our psalm today is found on the top of page 2. It's Psalm 16, verses 1 through 11. Let us read this whole verse responsively. Please read the bold printed even verses. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope, for you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16. Our second lesson today comes from Hebrews chapter 10, 11 through 25. Every priest rises daily to offer sacrifices in the temple, explained the author of Hebrews. Now we have Christ, our great high priest, who offered himself for us so that we no longer have to offer sacrifices for the forgiveness of sin. Through him we have full access to God. The law of the Lord is written on our hearts and minds. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 through 25. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected 
for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their heart and write them in their minds. Then, he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Here ends the second reading. Acknowledging the presence of Jesus with the reading of his gospel, I invite you to stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. As he, that is Jesus, came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what, what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us. When will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famine. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations, and when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Children, would you join me here at the baptismal font for a, for a message? Come on up. Good to see all of you. How's everybody? Good? Good weekend. Good. Me too. Don't like the cold, but that's going to come. We live in Minnesota. Yeah. All right. How many of you are afraid of something? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when we're younger, we kind of get afraid of the things that, uh, that are in the dark. Gosh, I remember I must have been, I don't know, 
maybe six, seven, eight, something like that. And I heard something in the closet. It was horrible. It was scratching. It was a mouse. Well, some people are afraid of mice. I know somebody very well who's afraid of mice. <laughs> they can scare us. And things in the dark can scare us. Things that we don't know can scare us. Right? What? What's that? Oh, he, hi, Mom. Hi, Grandma. What, what can scare you? Spiders are really creepy, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like the first half of the week. I was like, what? Like five. And we were like really. Uh huh. And then one, I remember being afraid. I saw a ghost. Oh, yeah. And I was scared. Oh, yeah. Just go back to bed. Yeah. There's no such thing as ghosts. There really isn't. There's no such thing as ghosts, Naomi. Hi. There's evil spirits, and there's evil people. And they would work against us. They would cause us to be afraid and not trust Jesus. That cross behind me, what does that remind you of? Daniel, I'm going to let someone else answer. What does that cross remind you of? Yeah. Jesus died. Jesus died for all our sins. Jesus has taken away all the things that we ought to really be afraid of, being away from God forever. He took care of that. And so the mouse in the closet, the make-believe ghost, the things that sometimes go bump in the night, the things that when you get older, it's not that kind of stuff. It's what's the economy going to do? Am I going to be able to keep my job? Will I be going to keep my health? All these things cause us to be afraid. But that cross reminds us that Jesus will never abandon us. That even if I die, I have life everlasting with him. Forever. And then this body that might get sick and die, he's going to raise it up. And it's going to be perfect. And I've got forever with Jesus. You know, Lord willing, I'll be maybe, maybe if I, who knows how old I'm going to get to be. I might be an old, old man at 90 years old. I don't know. It's up to the Lord. But that's a flash in the pan. Forever and ever, like you're going to pray in the Lord's Prayer, forever and ever. That's a long time. And that's what we're all going to be with Jesus. So this life, while there's certain things that can cause us to be afraid, know that Jesus is always with you. And you know what? Do this. Kind of scoop things up like this, really, with your own hands, okay? Follow me. Scoop these things up and then lift them up and say, Jesus, take it. Okay. And he'll say, thank you, my son. Thank you, my daughter. I'll take the things that give you fear. For I'm always with you. Okay? Remember that. Next time you're afraid. Jesus, take it. And, and he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll take what makes you afraid. Let's pray. Jesus, you know that there's more than lions and tigers and bears, oh no, that keep us in fear. There are real things in this life, oh Lord, that can cause us to be afraid. But we give them to you. And we ask, Jesus, that you would keep our hearts brave as we look to your cross, knowing that you love us beyond all things in this life, things that can make us afraid. Jesus, we give you glory for the strength you give us. In your, name, in your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you for contributing today. And take a candy and a bulletin. And good to see you. There's two there, Daniel. Why don't you give one to your sister? Thank you. Here you go. Thanks for coming on up. Good to see you guys. Okay. All right. Here you go. Okay. We're good? All right. You're going to find our next uh, hymn on the bottom of page three. Let's sing that.
your Jesus says, see that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famine. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. Be on your guard. For they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. The words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers, dear sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. I don't think you have to look too far. You don't have to look too far at all, perhaps and even in your own family, where you will find people who believe that the Christian church and the Christian faith has no future. To their way of thinking, the day of the Christian church has, is past. Like many other institutions in this supposed season of change, it's on its way out. Christianity, they argue, has been a big failure. And by their standards, the Christian church has not made the world a better place. By their standards, Christians are the worst kind of hypocrites. And their God is not a God of love. By all accounts, the church appears to be in a period of decline and and decay and even death. Regrettably, research supports this idea. Less than 30%, less than 30% of Americans are worshiping. And the standard is one time a month. 45% of Americans who call themselves Christians believe the Bible is not accurate. Nearly half. 59% of American Christians believe that Satan is not real. It's just some way that we have to put a name to it to describe evil. And 23, and it is the fastest growing group of people in this nation in terms of religious belief, 23% of Americans are part of a group called nuns. We spoke about them, them before. Nuns, which have no religious preference. You may hear them say, I am spiritual but not religious. Furthermore, in this nation, many, many, many are growing up outside of the Christian faith, right here in Wasika. Many Christians cry out for revival, but you can't revive that which is dead and has never been alive. We must admit, when we look at the matters purely from human reason, purely from a human point of view, the prospect of the church's future looks pretty dang dim. There are clouds on the horizon that bode no good for the church of Jesus Christ. There is open opposition to the church in every section of our world, even here. Maybe you, like me, have lost friends because of your faith in Jesus Christ. I have. Family members may doubt you, start showing up at church one too many times, and they might think you're a Jesus freak. There are some, even in this nation, their jobs are threatened because of their Christian beliefs. Their possessions are threatened. And thank God we've yet to see it in this nation. But you don't have to go very far. And there are Christians who are being killed 
for their confession in Jesus Christ. Then there's the shameful betrayal of Orthodox Christianity, small O, not large O like the church body, but the high priests of postmodernism and secularism, those who would scrap every fundamental article of the holy faith, the inerrancy and infallibility of the Bible, the divinity of Jesus Christ, the vicarious character of his suffering and death, his physical resurrection, those who have reduced the Christian faith to some sort of cultural movement of moral and social uplifting on the banners of social justice and ecology. There's the spirit of the age. I like saying the word. It's a German word, the zeitgeist, that creeps into virtually every church in this nation. And if that is not enough, we're all recovering or continue to recover in this fog of the pandemic a couple weeks ago, I was with 60-something pastors and churches across the nation, and every one talked about their churches struggling during this pandemic. Indeed, every Christian church in this nation is struggling in one way, shape, or form. If it isn't how the church is handling this, it, it's, it's the, the opinions on how one should handle this. And of course, I have the right opinion. And you who have a different opinion than mine are wrong. Wrong. Get over it. You're wrong. Pastors are war thin. Congregations are bifurcating. And people are just checking out. Taking all these things in consideration by human standards, the outlook of the Christian church is dismal. However, your faith... And you're here because of faith. The future is not a delusion. No matter how depressing the outlook is, no matter how dire the predictions, for after all, what matters is not what people say, but what Christ Jesus says on the subject. And he says that his church, his bride, the Christian church, has a future has a future. In today's gospel reading, it can strike fear in the most pious Christian heart. According to St. Mark, Jesus responded to the disciples who were in awe of a man-made creation, the temple. Oh, look at those stones. Aren't they great? He explained that there would be signs, including the leveling of the temple, which happened under General Titus of the Romans. He explained that the rocks would be rubble. He explained that many would be led astray. And he encouraged the disciples as he encourages his disciples today, hold fast to his word. What is that word? The word is the gospel. As Jesus said in verse 10, the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations the gospel the marvelous message of God's grace over a fallen race through the merits of the crucified and risen redeemer including free and full pardon for all sins through the atoning blood issued forth from that cross the glad tidings of great joy that he still reveals to us his people today to the world for that matter today Offering every man, woman, and child freedom, true freedom, freedom from all fears. Jesus summed it up best in the Gospel of John. You know this. We've used these words before. And it might be the only piece of Scripture you actually have memorized. To God be the glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. I always like the next verse. For God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Amen. In this message of God's mercy and grace, we look to even Peter 
Peter's part of this discussion. Tell us more about this. And I can't help but think that Peter was thinking about this after Jesus ascended, after he wrote his first letter to the Christian church. As they were dispersed, he wrote this in the first chapter of his first letter. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, for all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that is preached to you. In spite of wars and rumors of wars, The gospel of Jesus Christ will never die. The glad tidings of the grace of God through His Son, Jesus Christ, for you, for all people, will never be extinguished. As long as time endures, so long shall the message of love, the love of God through His Son, Jesus Christ, will endure. And as long as sinful people shall inhabit this world so long the gospel will offer them forgiveness and life eternal through faith and the great Redeemer. Everything else may perish, but the message of grace in Christ Jesus, the gospel, will prevail. When you think about it, No message in all the world has had such a difficult time as the gospel of Jesus Christ. A stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles, Jesus says. It has been given and to despise, it's been despised, it's been ridiculed, it's it's rejected. And over the centuries, people have attempted one way or another by snuffing it out. Maybe if we kill you Christians, the thing will go away. The gospel is here today. And we gather on this day, as Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, says, the word of God remains forever. Because that word is attached to Jesus. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. As sure as this earth will pass away, his word will never pass away, Jesus says. Note here, as recorded in the Gospel of Mark, that the Gospel must be preached. Why? Why must the Gospel be preached? Because this is the message, the good news message that has power, the power to transform people's lives, the power to change people forever, the power to raise the dead to new life, the power to forgive sins, the power to take a man who is not necessarily physically dead but spiritually dead, the power to take someone who is in that state into life beyond this breathing, this life, the power to take one who is destined to hell bring this child, this man, this woman into the glory of the Lord forever. Dear friends, the gospel of Jesus Christ is no dead letter no matter what anybody says. It is not a message of idle words and empty phrases. It's not an opium for the masses as one person would say or even a a governor of this state said it's a crutch for you as you cope with your problems. It's life. Here's where we rest on, from the prophet's words in the Old Testament. The prophet Isaiah says, For as rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return, but but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word go out from my mouth, and it shall not return empty to me, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose." and shall succeed in the things in which I send it. My friends, the eternalness and the effectiveness of the gospel is what we need now and what this world needs for this present time and in the future. It is a message that brings hope to the hopeless, freedom to the captive, It's a message of sins forgiven and life everlasting. 
Too many people want to take this Christian faith and just talk about the law. Well, let's get over it, shall we? No one is perfect like God. We all live in the shadow of the cross. We all fail miserably. But those who call upon Jesus Christ are washed. As we heard last week, we take our stinking robes, our war-torn robes, our robes stained by the pus of our disease, and we wash them in the blood of the Lamb, and we have eternity. We're sinless before a holy God, and we have life. Jesus warned us by confessing his name it is not going to be easy it is an opium of sorts to believe that the confess Jesus name makes it that it's going to be easy street from this point on no one has said that and if you're ever taught that it's a lie and in fact they're going to come for you they're going to demand what is it that you believe and may require just sticking to the faith in front of your family. It may require for some of us to stand before princes and kings. But don't worry. At that time, you will be given what to say. Have no fear, little flock, for your Jesus is with you, and he will strengthen you. But more than anything, as we did just yesterday, some of us gathered around a tomb. And it seemed that maybe Jesus is wrong. He said he would protect me. He said he would guide me. He said he would preserve my life. And we're looking at remains. Where are you, Jesus? Jesus is there with his gospel who says, nothing can separate you from my love. Even though we look at the dead and think death has the last word, he has the last word, and he says he'll call you out by name, and this body which is mortal will rise up immortal and will live for him forever. So even if they beat this body, even if they burn this body, even if they throw it away where no one can find it, our Lord knows where we are and he will call our name out and we will rise. I ask on this day as we conclude the church year that you rededicate yourself to the Lord as we do every Sunday and be of high resolve and be of no fear. For your Lord is with you, no matter what life throws at you. Find encouragement from Paul, Jesus' other apostle that we read lots about. He says this, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain as we walk with Jesus. He lifts us and supports us. And by the power of his spirit, keeps us in the true faith. And though they may destroy this body, we have life everlasting. This body will rise, and you will be perfect. And you will rejoice with all the saints of heaven forever. Because of what Jesus says, through his cross, and through his gospel. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all our understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, would you stand with me and confess your holy faith? Today we'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed as our confession. You'll find that on page 85. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll sing, Create in Me a Clean Heart, O God, as found printed in your bulletin on page 4 as the offering is brought forward. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, our possessions, all signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. With each petition I will end with Lord in your mercy. I ask that you would respond. Hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, only through trust in your Son shall your people find salvation. Through all the trials and tragedies that assail us, strengthen our faith. Keep us steadfast in lives that follow your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, strengthen and sustain and guide your church to proclaim your gospel and demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit. Make the church bold and courageous in the face of ridicule and persecution in the world. Use us all to lead the world to know you, the author and giver of life, both now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you have given us all that we have, use, and enjoy in this life. Let us be grateful for your bounty. Give us clarity of vision according to your will and a firm sense of the church's mission to the world. Form us into people with generous hearts, so through our faithful participation in God's mission, the kingdom of heaven may be extended, and all may be invited. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, we give thanks for all those who have faithfully served this country as we observed Veterans Day last week, those in military service and in public service. As we remember all veterans, we ask for your healing power in their lives, as many have seen and experienced dreadful situations in the line of duty. Grant them peace and mercy as you hold them in the palm of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for all those who are ill. We especially pray for Grove, for Jamie, for Barb, for Jerry, for Jill, and for those whom we name in our hearts. Bring healing strength to their illness and bring mercy to those so they may know that you love them. And we ask, O Lord, that you would be ever near those who mourn. We lift before you Tony Klinger and his family at the death of his father, Ken. Surround them with your very presence and let them know your love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these and more, Lord, we lift to you knowing that you hear our prayers. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Closing hymn is Onward Christian Soldiers is in the green hymnal 509.